This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has... Oh! Good morning, everybody. Welcome to commencement. So, I've been reading the Washington Post this morning, and I just want to share with you that, yes, indeed, there is good news in today's newspapers. Along with all the normal stuff that we've all endlessly talked about for weeks and months, the good news in today's Washington Post is that, yes, your name is listed. Now, let me just stress, I would rather this is the only time you make the Washington Post, because it's a moment of celebration and joy. And unless you're exceptional and you do something amazing, like bring about world peace or resolve a crisis in some part of the world, the chances are that the only other time you get into national media is when something goes wrong. That isn't what we expect of our graduates of Virginia Theological Seminary. We're proud of you this day. You've worked hard for these degrees. You've made a real difference, both in my life, as you've shaped me, in the lives of each other, as you've shaped each other, and trust me, in the world that you're about to serve. The world needs graduates of Virginia Theological Seminary, and we are delighted to be sending you out to make a difference, to preach the gospel and bring Christ to those who need to hear the good news. So let me just give you a sense of what's going to happen. Basically, you're going to participate in commencement. It will be just as it's always been. You will be invited to participate in the abridged morning prayer. You'll be invited to hear from you, the commencement speaker that you elected and asked to speak to your class on this occasion. And you will hear your name called out as we recognize your achievement and the work you've done. So what about the Washington Post? How do we get that to you? I'm planning to send a handwritten note with a copy of the Washington Post to every single graduate on this video. So just watch your mailbox. It will come soon. Meanwhile, enjoy this moment. Thank God for it. Thank those who are near you who've helped you through it. We're proud of what you've done, and we're proud of what you're going to do. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Dear people of God, we gather in the great 50 days of Easter with resounding hallelujahs. We are a people of new life and resurrection. And this is the day when we also rejoice with the class of 2020 as degrees are conferred and awards given. And yet, it is self-evident that this is a commencement like none other. We are dispersed around the country as our chapel and refectory sit empty. The campus is eerily quiet. In this time of pandemic, dislocation and disorientation, 
we find ourselves with at least two conflicting emotions. Joy for our graduates and grief for what is lost in this season. It is hard for the grief not to overwhelm the joy. But we do not let the darkness overtake the light. The light of Christ shines. It is meet and right that we should begin by holding up before God those who are most affected by this pandemic, the sick, the suffering, and those who have died. We also pray for all first responders and medical care providers, those of all faiths who give sacrificially. And we also give thanks for our graduates, their families, this community, those who work here and give their lives to the Ministry of Formation that is the mission of Virginia Theological Seminary. We pray and give thanks in the assurance that God is in the midst of both our joy and our struggles. This is a tender time, but we are an Easter people. And so let us now listen deeply to the word of God in Holy Scripture. Grounded in God's promises of restoration and renewal, we look forward with our graduates as they follow in the footsteps of generations of VTS alums and go into the world and proclaim the good news. A reading from the book of Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Send your Holy Spirit to renew our broken hearts. Lord of love, save us and help us. Forgive our despair, fill us with hope, and teach us to trust in your goodness. Lord of love, save us and help us. Grant us patience with you, ourselves, and one another. Lord of love, save us and help us. Help us to know your never-failing care. Lord of love, save us and help us. Deliver us from past hurts and help us to understand your will for us. Lord of love, save us and help us. Turn our grief into compassion for others and for ourselves. Lord of love, save us and help us. Release us from fear, renew us in love, Rekindle our hopes. Lord of love, save us and help us. In all things, renew us by your Holy Spirit, that we may live as children of God. Lord of love, save us and help us. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, 
Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendour of the whole creation for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We are so pleased to have the Right Reverend Jennifer Baskerville Burroughs, Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Indianapolis, as our commencement speaker, as selected by the graduating class. Bishop Baskerville Burroughs has a distinguished education with degrees from Smith College, Cornell University, and the Church Divinity School of the Pacific. Before becoming the Bishop of Indianapolis, she served in the Diocese of Newark, Central New York, and Chicago. She is distinguished as being the first black woman to be elected diocesan bishop. We are grateful to have her with us today, and it's my great pleasure to welcome Bishop Baskerville Burroughs. Congratulations, VTS Class of 2020. When you honored me by inviting me to be your commencement speaker, I had no idea it would be like this. My heart is bursting and aching, bursting with pride and joy at all that you have accomplished and all that you will offer to our beloved church and aching that we cannot be together for a commencement ceremony like the one you might have dreamt of. But over these weeks of staying at home and social distancing, we have learned anew two things we know to be true. Nothing can make up for not being together in times of joy and sorrow. And our job is to find every way we can to try. So that is what we're here to do today, to mark and celebrate your enormous accomplishments as students, preachers, pastors, and educators, even as we acknowledge that this is not how we wanted to send you, the class of 2020, out into the church and the world. And what a world it is. The next chapters in your ministry will require you to respond to the upheaval of a global pandemic and the deep racial, economic, and gender injustice it has laid bare. Many of the people we serve are grieving they are grieving people they love to have died. They are grieving communities they love that are reeling from the virus and from the already vast economic inequality it has deepened. And while we are grieving, many of our congregations and dioceses are facing financial reckonings that we had hoped for a decade or more in the future. So at every turn, we are encountering circumstances we don't feel prepared for and didn't expect. But beloveds, before you switch off the video in despair, let me assure you that we are called, you are called for just such a time as this. In the midst of the death and sorrow that surrounds us, great hope is also emerging. It is Eastertide, after all. The resurrection has happened, and as Paul reminds us in today's reading, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This sad, confusing, and revealing time has people asking where they can possibly find hope amidst all the sickness and injustice and death, amidst what seems to be all reasonable odds. And answering this cry, friends, has always been the work of the church. Sharing the liberating hope of gospel truth and living it out in communities of justice, love, and healing, even though it might seem countercultural, even though it might seem unreasonable, that is what we, church, are all about. This is our work, and the world is crying out for it. But in this wild and unpredictable season, we are being called to do this work as a church in new ways, clearly. As the pandemic has unfolded, many of the things that have served to separate us from the love of God in Christ have already fallen away. So much minutia is being cleared from our past by our urgent need to experiment, to be scrappy, to figure this out. Our patterns of communal life 
our institutional structures, the very essence of our calls to ministry, both ordained and lay, are bound to be changed forever. We've got a once in a lifetime, a once in a century opportunity to start fresh. I deeply believe that we are watching a new church being born. And in this church, as in every age, we need all the gifts, the gifts of teaching, preaching, and tending the sacramental life of the church will continue to provide a firm foundation for community building and justice seeking and radical welcoming that is needed now more than ever. But I, I bid you never forget that this is the work of the whole people of God, lay and ordained. In fact, in the church that is emerging, if those of us who are ordained make ourselves central to all of the action, we're doing it wrong. As we create the church that will respond to the spiritual and economic sea changes happening all around us, we will be called to be midwives of the sacred, not technicians of the sanctuary. For some of you, this might be the news that you have been waiting, waiting to hear. For others of you, this call to post-pandemic ministry might not sound like the kind of call you had in mind at all. Either way, I get it. You know, I graduated from seminary in 1997. A new century was on the horizon and my peers and I were, we were faithfully prepared to serve. But the church we loved was still largely embedded in the 1960s. Many of us were Gen Xers. I'm a Gen Xer, I'll admit it. And we had our characteristic irony and stereotypical blend of cynicism and ambition to make things better. As a generation, we were small in number, scrappy, and ready to hand the church over to the next generation of clergy and laity who could really take it where we thought it needed to go. Those of us ordained in the late 90s viewed ourselves as the bridge generation. We weren't digital natives, but we predicted a church that would be networked by this new thing called the internet, and we imagined a post-modern Episcopal church where we could rely on the strength of our relationships and be less defined by interest groups. In order to foster those relationships, we gathered on the Virginia Theological Seminary campus, on your campus in 1998, to form a group called Gathering the Next Generation. Originally for clergy, the organization quickly expanded to include laity because we knew that segregating clergy out from the deep work of being church wasn't the way of God. We had big dreams, big dreams and yearnings about what the church could be. From those modest beginnings came efforts that changed diocesan canons to open the doors for younger people to discern ordained ministry, and we had conferences for laity and clergy aimed at worshiping and gathering and praying in ways that were both ancient and of the 21st century. In those days, we imagined a church that could boldly proclaim Jesus and speak about faith with passion and heart. And we desired that all the non-essentials the non-essentials that kept the church fighting about small things, like who got to wash the altar linens. Those kind of things would be set aside in favor of a church where everyone would be welcome without reserve. For more than 20 years, we have been pursuing that dream. And now look where we are. The world you are being launched back into is one that we couldn't have imagined but you are ready for it. You are equipped to serve the future church in ways my peers and I never could have dreamed of being prepared. And you are just in time because the world is thirsting for the very gifts and skills and dreams you are offering 
And the church has never needed them more. Our church today is living the abiding truth of Paul's assertion in today's reading. Remember those Remember those words and hold them close. I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And your call, lay and ordained, is to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel to all nations in a hyper-connected world that even after the pandemic has passed, will also be home to many who are isolated and marginalized and in want of real relationships and embodied community. Beloved, none of us would have chosen this pandemic, God knows. But I have no doubt that you are up to the urgent work of creating this new kind of church in this new time. But I know you would not have chosen this way to begin. When I met some of you during my visit to campus last year, I came back so energized and hopeful for our future. You are amazing. Even though this is not the beginning you had hoped, it is also not the time to hold back your gifts energy, and skills that you have so faithfully honed during your studies at VTS. Your professors and mentors and advisors have prepared you for the ministry that awaits you, no matter what it brings. And you will always be bound to one another and to your seminary in a special way by virtue of these extraordinary times that have unfolded during your final semester. Now, especially now, I pray that you find your own assurance that nothing, not even a virus, can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Wherever you are bound, know that this hurting world needs you. I give thanks for each of you and your ministry in our beloved church that the world so desperately needs. You are just the ones we have been waiting for. Amen.
In the presentation of awards and prizes, the faculty of Virginia Seminary designate those students who have excelled in their academic efforts and demonstration of character. In your work, you have honored us. The Anglican Communion Prize recognizes a graduating student who has shown an outstanding commitment to discerning the mission of God through world Anglicanism. The prize winner will have demonstrated dedication to international Christian mission and theological understanding across cultural and theological differences. This year's prize winner understands intercultural relationships and witness to center on the practice of hospitality. In discerning the mission of God, the church is called to understand what it means to be both guest and host in God's world. It is God, he wrote in his thesis, who creates diversity. And at the heart of discerning God's mission, hearts open to one another. The Anglican Communion Prize is awarded to Guimont Pierre Louis. The Episcopal Preaching Foundation Award is given every year to a member of the VTS community who displays an aptitude and a passion and has shown notable improvement in their preaching. The winner of this year's award is no exception. Her sermons call hearers towards action and towards justice. She's an imaginative, she's bright, and she brings the issue of ecological justice to the forefront. Her senior sermon discussing the power of the centurion gripped the hearers and left a lasting memory in our hearts. This year's Episcopal Preaching Foundation Award goes to Gwen Crichton. Congratulations, Gwen. The Thomas Underwood Dudley Award for reading of scripture and liturgy is presented to a graduating senior who has distinguished himself or herself in the articulation and presentation of scripture and liturgy. The person chosen this year exemplifies the standards of this award by being a scholar, a leader, and a speaker. He reads with a reverential attentiveness that draws listeners into a profound experience with scripture and tradition. He embodies the best attributes of our seminary, and will continue to use words to change the world. This year's Thomas Underwood Dudley Award for reading of scripture and liturgy is presented to Shanta Kumar Suresh Kumar. Established in 2018 by Dr. Amy Dyer, in honor of her husband, the Right Reverend Mark Dyer, a theologian practitioner, this prize seeks to recognize a graduating senior who has developed theological skills that equip her or him to understand the craft of ministry. From his first days in this community, this year's recipient exemplified the characteristics we seek in the Dyer Prize winner a deep passion and love of theology, an integration of the love of learning with the love of God, a commitment to life in community, and a life in the classroom. His honors thesis, Peter went out and wept bitterly. Remorse as an occasion of grace demonstrates his mastery of a theological locus his creative application of that tradition to the church of the present hour, 
and his synthesis of past training of psychotherapy in the pastoral work of ordained ministry. Here, in the words of his second reader, is a thesis whose writing style is compelling and inviting, even lyrical. It moves readily between scripture and present-day cinema, the theology of V. Balthasar, R. Williams, and Elizabeth Johnson, and places at the heart of the Christian life a movement of inner conviction and honesty that can be called a gracious remorse. This year's recipient of the Bishop Mark Dyer Prize for Theological Reflection is Stephen Crippen. The Ford Chair is given by Susan Ford for a member of the MDiv graduating class who has exhibited through the range of his or her overall contributions, a strong commitment to the community life and mission of the seminary. When thinking of community, this native son of Virginia with a big easy vibe from his post Katrina service readily comes to mind. Whether it's leading music while strumming on guitar at Thursday Night Live or prayer and praise, a fireside sing-along, a community change meeting, or in his patient work as proctor, with seeming ease and pleasure, he creates space for harmony and brings out the best in others. Over the last weeks of this academic year, it's not surprising they found ways to bring us together when an unseen virus made us vulnerable and conspired to pull us apart. Who knew that we could sing along on Zoom? Yes, all is well with our souls. And most recently, he even reminded us to shout out prayers of love. Songs, service, and deep, deep care for this place and the community of Jesus personify this seminarian. This year's Ford Chair is awarded to Peter Nunley. The Charles and Janet Harris Award is given as a bequest of Charles and Janet Harris to a graduating candidate for holy orders who has best demonstrated academic excellence and leadership ability, as well as other qualities that evidence fitness for ordained ministry. One of the recipients of the Charles and Janet Harris Award combines academic ability with commendable patience, perseverance, focus, and dedication. Since coming to VTS, this student has blossomed in her studies in both theology and history. But throughout her time here, she has remained committed to her priestly vocation and to ministry. Her senior thesis combines careful analysis of early modern texts with exceptional research in Reformation history, spirituality, and gender studies. A talented scholar priest in the making, this award goes to Amanda Bourne. The second recipient of the Charles and Janet Harris Award has been both an exemplary student and an unfailing supporter of the community's worship and spiritual practice. This student was an outstanding scholar, a leader and exemplar in intentional commitment to prayer, a faithful servant of the worship office and the worship committee, a fine and dedicated singer, and author of an outstanding thesis on sacramental theology and the development of personal spiritual practices that deepen our recognition of the engraced world in which we live. Our second recipient of the Charles and Janet Harris Award is Doug Worthington. Congratulations, Doug.
The Yoder Scholarship was established by the Honorable Judge Ronnie A. Yoder to advance the study of love in Christian theology, life, preaching, and practice. This year's recipient has brought a broad awareness of world religious and spiritual traditions to the classroom in pursuit of a master's degree at Virginia Theological Seminary. With relentless curiosity and a commitment to honor God in the lay order, this student's winning submission was a beautiful visual art project with a reflection on God's act of creation as art and art as an act of love. This year's Ronnie A. Howard Yoder Scholarship is presented to Elta Wilson. On behalf of the Faculty of Virginia Theological Seminary, I present the following members of the graduating class of 2020 who are candidates for the postgraduate diploma in theology. Howard M. Finkling Finley. Connor Donegan Salter. On behalf of the Faculty of Virginia Theological Seminary, I present the following members of the graduating class of 2020 who are candidates for the postgraduate diploma in Anglican Studies. Nina Liget Bacchus. Marcia Shanta Barn. Erica Jackson SCM. Esther Ann Kramer. Brian Jeremy Means Koss. Savannah Ponder. On behalf of the Faculty of Virginia Theological Seminary, I present the following members of the graduating class of 2020 who are candidates for the degree of Master of Arts. Kerry Dowerty Connors, cum laude, whose summative project is entitled Youth in Global Community, a Curriculum of Theology and Mission for Episcopal and Anglican Women and Girls. Benjamin Miller, whose summative project is entitled Word Upon Words, The Sacramentality of Scripture as Expressed in Augustine and Speech Act Theory. Diana Sylvia Morland, whose summative project is entitled Towards an Understanding of Congregational Health. How do we nurture the growth of God's kingdom? Terry R. Nicoletti, whose summative project is entitled Unhooked by Grace, my inner work with St. Paul on recovering from binge eating. Alison McGeehy Miller Pace, whose summative project is entitled Faith Formation for Children with Disabilities. Guimont Pierre Louis Cum Laude, who through additional effort and fortitude has earned a certificate of Muslim Christian Studies through the Washington Theological Consortium, and whose summative project is entitled Living the Gospel in Haiti with Convict the intersection of the gospel and culture for a responsive and responsible church. Tumaini A. Serakikia, whose summative project is entitled Breaking the Silence Towards an Understanding of Human Disability for Family Life in the Diocese of Central Tanganyika. Shuresh Kumar Shanta Kumar, Kam Laudi, whose summative project is entitled God thinks otherwise. Jesus demonstrates that God is not against the war victims in Sri Lanka. Alta M. Wilson, cum laude, whose summative project is entitled An Engagement with John Polkinghorne and His Unity of Knowledge. On behalf of the Faculty of Virginia Theological Seminary, I present to you the following members of the graduating class of 2020 who are candidates for the degree of Master in Divinity. Joshua Patrick Barrett, who through additional effort and fortitude has earned the certificate in Christian spirituality. Paul Andrew Bennett. Amanda Patrice Bourne, cum laude, whose honest thesis is entitled 
power and piety, Disgratio Spirituum in the paratext of early modern English women translators. William Ramser Boyles, cum laude. Clint Edward Brown. Lawrence Joseph Civil Lee. David C. Cole, cum laude. Emily Collette, cum laude, who through additional effort and fortitude has earned a certificate in new mission practices. Jean A. Cotting, cum laude, whose honours thesis is entitled The Episcopal Church in Native American Boarding Schools, 1862 to 1905, Varieties of Assimilation Through Transfer Narratives. Catherine Rodman Reed Cox, cum laude. Mary Gwen Crichton, cum laude. Stephen Daniel Crippen, cum laude, whose honours thesis is entitled Peter Went Out and Wept Bitterly, Remorse as an Occasion of Grace. Christopher Decatur, who through additional effort and fortitude has earned the certificate in new mission practices. Matthew Dumont Machowski. Claire Louise Alsa. Jared Bartlett Grant. Rachel Howe Harbour, cum laude, who through additional effort and fortitude has earned a certificate in Christian spirituality. Donna Lee Hines. James Hamilton Bates Morton III. Peter Eric Nunnally. Jonathan Martin Pusick. Charles Allen Russell, who through additional effort and fortitude has earned a certificate in Christian spirituality. Colleen Smith Schiefelbein. Sam Sheridan, cum laude. Philene M. Ware Dunn. Jill Williams. Mary Margaret Wynn, cum laude. Douglas Stuart Worthington, cum laude, who through additional effort and fortitude has earned a certificate in Christian spirituality and whose honours thesis is entitled A Ritualization of the Engracement of the World Towards Rana's Mr. Goggy of the Mysticism of Ordinary Life. Almighty God, who in your love for the world ordained that your son should suffer death upon a cross of shame, we give you thanks that it has become for us a sign of his triumph over sin and death and the symbol of our salvation. We pray that in your mercy you will bless those who dedicate themselves to your service and that these class crosses may be a sign which draws their hearts to Jesus Christ who with you and the Holy Spirit leads us to the glory of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever. Amen. Commencement is often a season of transitions. We're saying goodbye to seminarians that we've grown to love as they become graduates. And we will be in the fall saying hello to those who seek to join our community. What's true of the students is also true of staff and faculty. And just briefly, I want to highlight some transitions among the faculty. The first is we will be saying goodbye to Dr. Zainab Sullivan. When Zainab arrived in the fall of 2014, 
She did so as the Henry Luce Visiting Professor of Islamic Theology and Religious Pluralism. She brought an energy, an intellect, a dedication to practice that had a profound impact on our community. We learned a lot from having a devout Muslim in our midst. I'm delighted to share with you that she will be the new Muslim scholar at the Institute of Islamic, Christian and Jewish Studies in Baltimore. We will miss Zainab, although I'm confident that just being down the road in Baltimore means she'll have plenty of opportunities to visit. You will recollect that December 2019, we said farewell to our professor of church music, the Reverend Dr. William Roberts. Bill had been exceptional in this role. He brought a capacity for diverse musical types, a love of Episcopal liturgy, a sensitivity to the changing nature of the church, an extraordinary capacity as a composer, and a delight as a teacher and a colleague. We recognize now that he has transitioned, and we look forward to the fact he's just in Richmond, and therefore he too will not be a stranger to this place. I'm delighted to share with you that after an extensive search, we have found Dr. Robert's replacement. We are appointing Dr. Marty Wheeler Burnett to the position of Associate Professor of Church Music beginning July 1, 2020. We were excited by the field that we had the opportunity to engage with and we're delighted with this appointment. She will truly bring depth and commitment very much in the tradition of Dr. Bill Roberts. Greetings to the class of 2020 at the Virginia Theological Seminary. My name is David Charlton, and I am at this point the chair of the Board of Trustees. Uh, I am also uh, a young man who grew up on this campus as a son of a faculty member and am descended from graduates of this institution in the classes of 1927, 1935, and 1949. So this place is very dear to me and the work we do here and has been in my family for a very long time. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I'm here to congratulate you on your journey. Seminary is never easy under the best of circumstances, and perhaps especially so for your class, given some of the things with which you have had to contend, all of which uh, have demonstrated extraordinary resilience uh, in the class of 2020. Uh, you have been well tested, as all seminary classes are, and your formation here will serve you well uh, when you move into leadership in the church. Um, I'm a member of a approximately 35 member board of trustees, all of whom are volunteers, all of whom love the Episcopal Church, all of whom love Virginia Seminary and are proud of the work that our faculty do in education and formation, and even more proud of the work that you and those that came before you and those that will follow you have done and will do for our church. Um, all classes are historic, but uh, boy, your class is really historic. Uh, the amount of moving around that we've had you do and the amount of construction and the different ways that you've had to adapt to your ex years of experience here have been pretty extraordinary. And then the arrival of the COVID-19 virus, which led us all into places that none of us have experienced in our lives or careers before, uh, is one that I hope no other class has the opportunity to share. Um, you all have been very nimble with regard to the construction uh, problems and very adaptable, and I am told uh, exceedingly positive in spirit. So I thank you. I congratulate you on behalf of the Board of Trustees and wish you Godspeed. Congratulations, graduating class of 2020. You're my first graduating class and it's been amazing getting to know you. I wish you all the best. Know that you'll be in my prayers and that you've indeed exemplified why this is a wonderful call for us who are professors and for the church at large. Congratulations.
Congratulations, class of 2020. You came here to learn, and I pray that happened. You also brought amazing gifts to help us learn alongside of you. For that, I give thanks to God. I hope you also are leaving with some deep sense of how to pass on the faith, how to teach and learn in Christian community. After all, if we're not disciples who make disciples, there will be no church. So blessings on your way and remember your baptism. Congratulations, graduates of 2020. Diploma, master's, doctoral level, this is your day. It has come. It hasn't come the way we expected it, and I very much regret that we cannot be together for this. I know that you do too. I know that this probably feels like a kind of unfinished business, even though we have completed all the work of your time at VTS. I certainly feel it, but I found myself thinking a week ago about the disciples on the road to Emmaus and the monstrous sense of unfinished business that burdened them and remembering that Jesus came among them and with his presence to them set them on fire with a larger vision than they even began with of what life in him would be. And if God can redeem that unfinished business, God can certainly redeem our sense of that in this uh, different way of sending you off into the next phase of your life and ministry. I look forward to the times our paths will cross. I am grateful for the opportunity I have had to teach and learn with you. And I wish you God's every blessing, the blessing of the risen crucified one, in the next steps that you take in your service of the kingdom. On behalf of Academic Affairs and Student Life, congratulations, class of 2020! Yay! Yay! Each year I feel this combination of sadness and joy at commencement time. A sadness that I am losing students and, and groups that have been so important to me that have shaped me as the teacher and priest I am, and joy that the church will receive this group of uh, well-trained, exciting, and able, faithful pastors. Uh, this year, I feel that combination so deeply for each of you and all of you. You have been a wonderful class. I, I have loved having you in class and my small group and visiting with you in the refectory and in chapel worship. Uh, but I feel a special grief in not being able to say these words to you in person and to see the love and delight in your family as you graduate and enter into your vocation. But I feel an even deeper joy knowing that in this world that is filled with such suffering and fear, you enter as these faithful witnesses, these members of Christ's body who are equipped and joyful and trained and ready to bring this message of hope and Easter light in a world that is so desperate to hear it. So congratulations class of 2020 and I am eager to see you in the fall and in the church where our paths will cross again. God bless you all. Congratulations, class of 2020. You've made it. You will all have a special place in my heart. Those of you that entered the campus on August, the summer of 2017, I feel like you are my class because we all landed here on the campus of BTS together. You to be students, me to be an administrator. And look what you have accomplished. Look what you've done. You're going to have a story to tell unlike any other. You're the first class at BTS to have a 
graduation on a digital platform, what great stories you will have to tell, what others may think are lemons you will take and create a sweet, sweet lemonade. So I look forward to hearing all of your success stories, all the books you will write, all the sermons you will preach. That's the great thing about being an administrator. We get to sit back and watch you just soar. So congratulations, class of 2020. Go out into all the earth and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Peace and blessing. From the Center for Anakin Community Studies, we would like to celebrate with and congratulate the class of 2020. We've really enjoyed getting to know you over the time that you've been at VTS, and we wish you all the best in the next chapter of your ministry. And we hope you'll stay in touch and come back and see us. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2020. Congratulations, class of 2020. I'm so sorry that I can't be there uh, to wish you congratulations in person, but here's hoping that I would see you in the fall and we can celebrate then. Uh, for now, uh, it's a wonderful achievement for you to have finished, uh, and I look forward to seeing what becomes of you in, in the next years of your lives. Take care. Class of 2020, you will be forever known as the class that pivoted and finished the year. I'm so proud of you. I've been thinking of you, praying for you in this time, and I'm so happy that we will stay in connection with you because you're about to become alumni. Thank you so much. Blessings. Congratulations, class of 2020. This is Professor Jefferson here. I'm so very glad that you were able to persevere and to show up for this day. Though we're not able to be with you in body, we're definitely here with you in spirit. I wish you congratulations and success as you go into the future. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. We send you all our love and our congratulations today. Well done, class of 2020. Greetings to the class of 2020 on this, your graduation day. You know, in my work at the Academic Resource Center, I don't get to work closely with all of you, but I do get to meet you all in August term. And each year when a new class arrives with all of your questions and worries about what it's gonna be like to be in seminary, I ask myself, I wonder what they'll look like by graduation. And I am never disappointed because in your time with us at BTS, you work hard, you question hard, and you change. You become this group of leaders and thinkers that none of us could imagine back in that August term. So for those of you I don't know that well, congratulations. And to those of you with whom I've journeyed these past years, just know you've taught me way more than I could ever teach you. And for that, I am grateful. I know that today doesn't look anything like the graduation you anticipated, that the world doesn't look anything like the world you thought you were training for, but the world needs you. It needs everything that you have become in your time on the Holy Hill. It needs your creativity and your love. So go forth. This is a big day, but it is not the end. Good luck. Well, VTS class of 2020, I'm really going to miss you. I'm here with Isaac the sheep to send you out with blessings from Solomon's temple. And I'll read to you a little bit of Solomon's blessing in just a second. But first, let me adjure you and admonish you to continue rooted in the scriptures, studying them diligently, praying out of your study of the scriptures, preaching always biblically out of the scriptures. And may God truly bless your ministries 
whatever they may be, and come back and see us often. <laughs> this spot where I stand now is where Solomon blessed his people. May God, our very own God, continue to be with us just as he was with our ancestors. May he never give up and walk out on us. May he keep us centered and devoted to him, following the life path he has cleared, watching the signposts, walking at the pace and rhythm he laid down for our ancestors. Bad flamingo. Hi, class of 20, it's EPL. Congratulations on this amazing accomplishment. I'm sorry that it's not exactly the traditional ceremony. Um, some of you know, I started at the seminary exactly three years ago, the same day as the 2020 MDivs did. And so I have kind of walked this journey with you. You are a class that will always live in my heart. Um, since we are so connected. <laughs> um, I will pray for you every day. I will think of you at your new vocations and in your new positions. Um, I know that you will bring such a wealth of knowledge and patience and kindness to the church. Uh, I'm really sorry that I missed out on your last year and your senior year uh, between maternity leave and the pandemic, but I'm glad that I got to know you and got to become friends with all of you. Congratulations. Greetings, class of 2020. I want to add my congratulations to those of my colleagues. It's been a real true honor to work with you these three years. You're an amazing class. I'm sorry we don't get to celebrate with you in person right now, but we hope we will in the future. And we just want to send you forth with our blessings and our love. And I certainly add my own personal Blessing, love to all of you, and very best wishes in your ministry. Congratulations, class of 2020. May God richly bless you as you continue on your journey. The Dean's Office just wants to congratulate the remarkable class of 2020. This is an amazing class that coped with the pandemic. Our prayers are with you last of 2020. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Well, class of 2020, it hasn't been easy for you. Um, we thought the hard part was going to be uh, doing without the refectory um, and camping out in a tent for a while. And then suddenly coronavirus hits and you've got commencement online, which has got to be really hard. Um, I'm glad that there's a possibility of reconnecting later. Um, but in the meantime, we just want you to know how awesome you are and how much we care about you and how much we're rooting for you and how much we want this day to be perfectly splendid as much as it can be online. Bummer. But whatever happens in terms of the physical stuff, the spiritual um, depth of your commitment to this place and to your studies and to your vocation is unquestioned. That's, uh, that's solid. Um, and we expect great things from you because we know you well. Uh, and we know that you're going to do wonderful things for God and for the church. They're lucky to have you, every single one of you. You're awesome. You're awesome individually. You're even more awesome collectively. We believe in you. We love you. And we wish we could hug you in person. We're sending hugs and kisses, not from six feet away, but from my office at home. Um, and I just want to say, I hope in spite of everything, that it's a great day for you. 
And I do look forward to the chance when we can really hug you and send you kisses in person. God bless you all. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I am so proud of you, not because of the academic work that you've done, but because of the work of formation, learning how to thrive under less than ideal circumstances, learning how to listen to God's voice, and figuring out that you don't have to be perfect in order to serve God well. God bless you and congratulations. Kitov, Kitov, Kitov. Well, class of 2020, the day has arrived. Here is your commencement. It's not the commencement any of us thought you would have. I, like probably you, am grieving the fact that we are not together. So many of us uh, began together, the juniors who came in. I came in the same time you did. I sort of joked with you all that I'm a member of the class of 2020. We're figuring this out. And I guess three years later, we're hopefully a bit wiser. Uh, in these three years, I have fallen in love with you. Those of you who came after two years and one year, the same thing. I will miss you terribly, but I'm so, so proud of you. So often people will ask me, what's it like being at Virginia Seminary? And I tell them that the students that I am able to serve, you, make me optimistic about the church. And it is in that state of mind that I bid you farewell I give you my blessings and encouragement as you begin this new chapter in your ministry. Take care, be well, and peace be with you. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Friends, this has been the most extraordinary commencement ever. But it is still a commencement. You have earned these degrees. God, working through this community, has formed you to be agents of the gospel and to serve God's church. We send you out proud of the work you've done and confident that God will use you. And so, after the concluding community song, there will be a grab-and-go lunch provided in Scotland for anybody who's either near the campus or on the campus. And that's available from 11 o'clock this morning through to 1 p.m. Please enjoy the day and thank God and each other for what God has done in your life.
changest not thy compassion they feel not as thou hast been that forever will be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning Class of 2020. To the class of 2020. Okay. Class of 2020. Here's to my class 2020. ETS community, thank you so much. Thank you to a truly beloved community. This isn't how we imagined ending our time. I love you. And because I love you, possible for you to break my heart and to open my mind and to both nourish and trouble my spirit. I'm grateful for your sense of humor, your intellectual curiosity, and your commitment to changing the world and the church for the better. By far one of the, without exception, one of the best things about the past three years has been 
our class. I could not be more grateful or more proud to be a part of this resilient class. I can't wait to see God's plans for us all. It's been a blessing and a privilege to be formed for ministry with and by you guys. I can tell you so much about the Episcopal Church and I walk away with some amazing friends and colleagues. And I want to say that I will miss you and I wish you well in everything you undertake. I love you. I miss you. I can't wait until we get to see each other again. Now let's go out into that world and give them Jesus. I'll carry you with me always in what you have made me and in whatever I do in Christ's name. Care, Godspeed in your ministries, and I hope that we will all see each other again very, very soon. It's done. We're done, folks. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Love you. I love you. And I'll miss you. I love you all. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of journeying with thee. Rayford!